at some point, you know, you guys heard that USC had lost to UCLA, so that you know you guys were going to be in the national championship. Were you more excited, ready to play the champion the BCS championship game, or were you just more focusing on the SEC championship that you had just won? Well, we didn't. Um, you know, we didn't really learn that to kind of after the game when we kind of had the game wrapped up. So you know, once you have the game wrapped up, of course you're thinking, oh, we're going to you know we're going to the ship, we're going to the national title game. So you're never going to be excited, but you, you're not really thinking about that during the game. Uh, you know, who the possible is that they're keeping. You're just trying to take care of business and get there. So, uh, you know, like I said, once it set in and we knew that they lost and everything was going to set up perfectly for us to get there, you know, everybody was excited. You know, everyone was running around and, you know, just just, just, just very excited to know that all the hard work, all those early events, all the, you know, the preparation, all those meetings were paid off and it, it, it did go, uh, uh, you know, go, didn't, didn't go on earth and everything, you know, happened for a reason and it worked that perfectly. Well, in the national championship game, you guys were slated to face the Ohio State Buckeyes, and right away, everyone starts saying, ah, the Buckeyes are too big, the Buckeyes are too strong, they're too fast, the Gators won't stay on the field with them, and you heard all this for about a month. This, this, uh, this gets to start annoying you? Of course it did. Uh, it annoyed us, you know, big time, and uh, to, to, to be in the NBC and uh, to compete against week in and week out, you kind of take it as a slap in the face where, you know, you get media and you get all these other people telling you you don't have a chance. And uh, as I said before, Coach Myers, uh, psychology major for me, he did a good job doing that whole process of just getting us motivated and any kind of edge, any kind of country, any kind of thing he sees that he can bring up to the higher attention, he did it. And uh, we had seniors that year that uh, you couldn't really talk about this in the moment. You know, they didn't need any extra motivation. They had all the motivation they needed from being at Florida and not having any success and not winning. You know, having, I, I'll say, not having the amount of success they wanted the previous year. So they didn't need any extra locker room talk, man. You know, so the, all, the, all the talk of not having a chance, they just motivated us perfectly and did a great job of, you know, you know, just having us riled up when the game started. Well, the game, the game didn't really start out well for the Gators. Uh, Ted Ginn Jr. took the opening kick and goes all the way for a touchdown. And at that point, I'm sure people are thinking, oh, yeah, here we go. Ohio State's doing exactly what we thought they were going to do. And, uh, yeah, didn't exactly work out that way. Started off with your started off with your big kick return to answer. And then someone got a bit of your, a bit of your face mask ad for that. All right, so Florida gets the ball at the 50-yard line to start. How pumped are you? Are you thinking that, yo, we got this, let's go, we're on our way? Well, I knew, you know, that, you know, they were going to make good plays. Like I said before, they were a good team that year, but so we weren't thinking that they were going to make any plays. So the season that game goes back with the first one, you're, you're, you're looking like, man, you know, not, not, the, not the first play. How you doing? Good. Yeah, you, you, when you see them go back, you're not thinking, you know, man, the first play. But at, the same, but at the same time, you know, uh, me and myself being a returner, I'm thinking, you know, being a competitor, I'm, you know, I'm ready to go. I want to make a play also. So when the, when the time came and, you know, I got on the field, I tried to, you know, take it back also. And, and unfortunately, I didn't get all the way to the end zone. But it was a good enough play where it put our team on the first 50 and we went right down and, you know, got seven points also. Well, the, the Gators' first three drives on offense go pretty quickly. Leak, Baker, touchdown. Next drive, Percy Harvin. Touchdown. Next drive, Deshaun Wynn. Wow. Touchdowns. 21-7. Just like that. Are you, are you in any way surprised at how easy this is? No, not at all. You know, not at all. Like I said, we did a great job preparing. Uh, did a great job of, uh, you know, working on our game plan and perfecting our game plan throughout the whole game process. And then to, 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 to give all, you know, give a lot of credit to the coaches and senior leadership. They did a great job of, you know, taking – the locker room talk and all the bullets are talk about, you know, we didn't have a chance and stuff like that to use a little motivation. So we were ready when the game started. And I can remember, you know, uh, to, to kind of go off of something that happened during our media day. I remember uh, one of our seniors that year, uh, we in the media session, and uh, one of the, uh, the media asked him, you know, what, is, what do you think, what do you predict the score is going to be? And, you know, with a straight face, he said 99 to 0. And of course, you know, he wasn't predicting the scores, but he, he just felt like we were going to have that big of a day, you know, as a team. We prepared that well. We were, you know, cocky or anything, but we felt we prepared that well when they were going to have a chance that day. And, uh, you know, we came to the game thinking that way, so it was surprising to happen that day to me. 
Who was this? Uh, Kenneth Cooch. That Jacksonville made him. And, you know, one of my, one of my um, better buddies on the team that year, man, was a, was a, was a brother to me and took me down this lead. Uh, he was a senior that did a great job of leading us that year. But Kenneth Cooch, I remember it vividly, man. We're standing around, he's sitting around in the, uh, in the fiesta bowl, you know, here in the, uh, in the stands. And, uh, certainly, uh, Letting them do interviews and they asked him questions at the same time. I remember they asked too, you know, what do you think the scores of the game going to be? 99 0 with a straight face. And I remember after that, the media saying, like, you guys are a lot looser than uh, Ohio State was, you know, because doing the whole bull process. I, I, I'm, getting, I'm only assuming they were, you know, kind of uptight and not, you know, as loose as we were. But that just shows, you know, the level of respect that you guys have for each other. You know, it's not just about the scores, but you guys are just as Well, Florida didn't get 99, but they came pretty close to getting halfway there. Uh, you know, Ohio State only got one touchdown on offense the whole game. The Gators defense swarming Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner, who's supposed to have a huge game. Meanwhile, Chris Leak is the one who's having a field deck, picking apart the Ohio State defense. At halftime, it's 34-14. Gators rolling along. What's Coach Meyer say to you at halftime? Just keep playing. Just keep playing, keep executing, and uh, keep doing your job. And, you know, you're a good national champion uh, when, when, when the clock is uh, zero. And, you know, that was, all, that was all the message we needed to hear. Like I said, when it, once you get to that point in the national championship or even the SEC championship, you don't need the motivation. You don't need the big rah-rah-rah speeches that have time or anything like that because, you know, you, you, you recognize the moment you're in and, you know, you just want to seize it and, and, you know, be a national champion at the end of the day. Throughout the game, Florida was doing whatever it wanted in any phase of the game. I mean, Chris Leak was just rolling out, calling audibles. He was throwing for huge gains to whoever he wanted defensively. Gators all over Smith. And special teams-wise, you had several nice returns. They, they, they weren't huge, but you were able to pretty much have your way with your defenders. You were juking them out. You were beating them to the sidelines. Tim Tebow was just pounding the Buckeyes up the middle. And... Throughout the regular season, you guys were struggling. I mean, you beat Georgia by seven. You beat FSU by seven. And, and some of these wins came late in the second half. You beat Tennessee by one at the very end. You know, it took a while to beat Arkansas. LSU, Alabama, South Carolina, it was a big game. Did it seem that, you know, you'd face a lot better teams in the regular season? Or did you think that, you know, you guys were just that much more ready to play against Ohio State? I think it was a testament to, you know, a little bit of our uh, schedule that year, and we did play a lot of tough teams, but it also was, you know, that we're just ready to play. Like I said, it, it, the, the comment by, you know, a, a guy like Toots and, you know, the, the, the comments coach we were making all that week, you know, it wasn't cockiness or arrogance, you know, we really believed that we're going to, you know, uh, have that success in that game, and uh, it, it was all due to the, the process we went through all year, the tough games, and, uh, you know, you, you hear the talk that, you have to go through tough times, to, you know, in adversity to, to reach success. And I feel like we did that all year. And to go through those tough games all year, once we got in that moment, in that BCS game, uh, it was easy because, you know, you've been through the toughest moments and you've been through the, the, the big-time games and against the, the hard team, and, you know, the really good SEC opponents. So, you, you know, I'd say it's a great team, but, you know, do they really compare to Alabama? Do they really compare to Georgia? And, you know, that's the way we thought, you know, and that's what we applied to that game. Okay, well, you didn't exactly match Tuke's prediction. He said 99 nothing. You almost got halfway. 41-14, you guys blew the Buckeyes away. And Chris Lake, the senior, a lot of criticism hurled his way throughout his career. He's the MVP. All right? And you are watching him get the crystal ball and hold it up. How sweet of a moment was this for you to watch this Chris Leak, a senior, get this moment of joy? Yeah, you're happy for him. Okay? You know all the, uh, the things he's went through. You know, to him coming in, like I said, I'm a big-time college football fan, so to know he came in as a freshman and uh, for those seniors not to have the success they wanted to throughout their college career, to see them go out the way they wanted to, and to, to, you can't paint, you know, you can't draw it up or write it up any better. We're just happy. We're just very happy for him, man. And, you know, when you get in the locker room and you get on the bus, when you tell him how proud of you, proud of you are and just try to think of as much as possible for helping you uh, get to that point also. And for you, personally, again, same question as before from the SEC Championship game a year ago. You were in high school thinking about where you're going to go, and now here you are, a national champion. What's that feel like to you? 
So, Brandon, after winning a national championship as a freshman, um, you know, you come back as a sophomore, you know, one year older, one year stronger, one year better, but Tim Tebow says in his autobiography that it just didn't seem like, you know, all the guys that should have were coming back with the right attitude. Some of the guys were coming back a little lazy or just, you know, not ready to compete right away. Did you notice anything like this? Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, um... You know, he definitely has his own opinion opinion of it. He, he sees things through his eyes the way he does. I see it a different way. You know, uh, I just think, you know, we were a little young. Um, guys that were asked to step up in certain positions weren't ready. Um, and, you know, in, in, in all, when you step on the field on Saturday in SEC play, you lose games. When, when you have young guys that aren't ready to play or aren't prepared for the moments they're in, you know, you lose games in the SEC. You don't, you know. You don't squeak them out, or you don't, you know, come come out with the victory. Somehow you lose, and that's what was happening. I don't think you know guys were like the days or anything like that. You know, we had enough talent, we had enough guys working hard. You know, we just had youth that wasn't ready to play in certain positions, and you know, that turned into losses. Well, early on, it seemed that Florida was able to escape those issues of youth. I mean, they blow out the first two teams they played. Not very strong teams, but, you know, Florida started out 2-0 and and looking very strong. And then the Tennessee Volunteers come to town. And, well, no suspense. You guys destroyed them. And it all started with your big punt return. You know, you just try to accelerate and you just try to get to the end zone. Like you said, when I made the two moves, uh, once I straightened up, Pretty much, you just see green grass and the pylon. You're just trying to get to that pylon as you know as quick as you can and, and as fast as you can. And uh, uh, it was just you know uh, a feeling that you can't describe. You know, you know uh, after making the play my freshman year and coming back my sophomore year in against them in that rivalry and making another big play and this one actually you know counting for six points and helping the team go up the momentum and things like that. You know, it was just a great feeling. Well, you, in general, when you catch a punt, what's your first instinct? Not get hit. Uh, that's the first thing. And then secure. Well, the first thing would be to secure the punt. The second thing would not get hit. Uh, but I always pride myself on, you know, just getting back there and being relaxed. Uh, uh, people always ask me different questions about returning and, and advice I would give to returners. And I, it's kind of a, you know, a thing that you kind of bond with. You know, and you just have to step back there with the confidence that you're not going to make a mistake and you just want to make a play. And uh, that's what I always did. I never was nervous or uh, tense or anything like that. I was just always eager to make a play. And every time I stepped back there, that's what I tried to do. Well, in this case, it was surprisingly easy. After your first two cuts, you, you know, you made two guys miss, and then it was just so wide open. Were you in any way surprised or were you, you know, that confident that your blockers would open up that much space for you? I was that confident. Uh, you know, we had the, we had the athletes and we had the scheme the, that you know week in week out we had we had set we had the mindset basically that you know we can make a play each time we touch the ball. You know, it's the block set up perfectly and we you know we had time to get things started. And uh, that was one thing because my always preach was just get you know myself started and uh, you know a, a play is going to happen after that or at the worst good field position. So once I you know made those two cuts and I was off. You know, running, I knew it was going to be a big play after that. 